Hello again. We're rolling. Look what I just got. And yes, I purchased it because it said it has realistic drifting action. Okay, it drifts. It's actually pretty cool. I always wanted to make a drifting robot, so I popped it open to see what made it tick. It had four-wheel drive, differential lock, simple on-off control, but it had no marking on the chip. And I couldn't figure out how the circuit board was working, I admit. So, off we go. First thing I needed was motor controllers, and I decided to make my own out of some old servos. This is a simple servo tester from Gadget Gangster, which I like very much. Turn the knob and it spits out pulse width modulated signals of matching lengths to anything hooked up to it. It's quite simple, but it works very well for me whenever I'm working with something to do with, you know, pulse width modulation and servos and stuff. And speaking of servos, their gears often break because things I make often crash. But the electronics inside are usually in fine shape. And here I hooked up the inside of a broke servo, and as you can see, the pot meter, the motor controller and motor works just fine. If you cut off the pot meter and replace it with two matching sized resistors, the motor controller will always think the pot meter is in center position. This means that you can control the motor in either direction, slow or fast, depending on the signal received. I disordered the motor from the board, and in its place I soldered the wires to the motor that makes the car drive. And there you have it, now the drive motor of the car can be controlled by a simple pulse width signal. This is the XC230 PIGX 08M microcontroller on a board. It's very easy to work with, I just uploaded the program you see on the right, which makes the server go to position 100, wait a second, go to 200, wait a second and loop. I managed to find another broke servo. It looked a little different, but it's all the same. You know, wires to feed the power and give signal, PCB and a pot meter and a motor. Again, I cut the pot meter and replaced it with two matching resistors. I replaced the motor with the one doing the steering on the car, and now I could completely control the whole car just by two pulse width modulated standard servo signals. It was easy to make the car steer hard to left or hard to right, but I wanted to find the neutral position that would make the car go straight ahead. So I made myself a little tool. I took one of the pot meters that I cut off from one of the server controllers and hooked it up to an analog input on the microcontroller. And now on my computer monitor I could read that value and this way I could experiment with various values for a variable inside of the microcontroller. Next, I also hooked up one of the servers to the microcontroller. I extended the code a little, so it would limit the variable BO to keep the pulse width within the range a typical server controller likes as minimum and maximum. Now I could slowly turn the pot meter just until the steering was in center, read that value, and use this exact value in the programming that I was about to do in a moment. I decided only to give this robot a single sensor, a distance sensor, the SRF05. Whenever possible, I like to use female jumper wires to connect components because that makes it really easy to reuse the components in later projects. Here's a drawing of the car. This is the SRF05, this is the XC230, and this is how you connect the SRF05 to the XC230. This box and this box are supposed to illustrate the servo controllers, and you saw how I hooked them up already. So all you need to do after all this is done, is to take the power from the car and plug it into the XC230. And then fun starts, the play and programming. I love that, and because I'm not using Arduino but Pickaxe, I can write very small and easy programs and make them work. I do not recommend that you try and write your entire program at once. First program the car to drive and stop when there's something in front. Make that work. Then perhaps instead of stopping, make it turn and stop. Make that work. And take things one step at a time like that. Here's the program I wrote for my car. At the top it's initiating variables, making the rest of the program easy to work with. Then comes the main program, and below that are any subroutines. So what you see here is the actual program driving the car, and it's free to download. I hope you have fun with it. See how it drives.
Thank you very much for watching this episode. I can't wait to read what you thought of it in the comments. Thank you. See ya.